Welcome along to Obsession Engineering. This is my now old Shark Race R Pro Carbon Helmet, and it is awesome. But because I want to go back and race around the Isle of Man this year, I'm not allowed to use this anymore. So a few days ago, a box turned up and my new helmet's in it. So I suppose we ought to have a look in the box. So inside this large cardboard box is a smaller cardboard box and inside there is my new helmet. It is the new Shark Race R Pro Carbon GP. And the big difference between my old helmet and this one is that this one is FIM homologated. So let's get it out of the box and have a look. So inside the cardboard box is a rather snazzy helmet bag. I've never had a snazzy helmet bag before, so that's quite nice. Undo that. And then the helmet is inside yet another bag. So I think we need to get that open. And here we go. Da, da, da. That is my snazzy new helmet. And the big difference between this and my older Racer Pro is... It's got a big wing on the back, it's a bit more carbon, a bit more red anodizing, which is quite snazzy, and an FIM homologation sticker, and that is going to be quite important. So what do you get for your money with your Shark Race R Pro GP helmet? Well, you get a slightly different lining to the old helmet. They've updated the colour and slightly the finish on it and bits like that. So the actual lining inside the helmet is different. The D-rings are slightly changed as well. The wind protection flaps changed. These have got a little bit further in so you get even more of a fit round there to keep the noise out. You get some anodised red bits. The standard sort of shark quick release system. So you flick that out, you pull that out, same on the other side and then Push it back in, easy as that. They are a nice simple visor to change. Uh, the vents are excellent, they always have been. There's vents up there as well and the vents on top of the helmet, they all work really well. The, vi the clear visors come with an anti-fogging sort of coating on them and you get the little nose guard and you also get in the packet a rubber full-size nose guard that can replace this so it sort of turns it into a foggy type mask. So there are some distinct improvements from the old helmet, and the old helmet was blooming good. I'm not sure I can do it from sitting here. I don't think you'll be able to hear me. I said, I don't think you'll be able to hear me very well. With the TT being cancelled for the last couple of years, the organisers have taken the opportunity to improve a few bits and make some changes. And one of those changes is the safety management system. Now, this basically is a risk assessment, and in it are some changes to our riding kit. The important changes for us competitors is all our leathers, helmets, boots and bits now have to be CE approved, which isn't a big issue because anything sold since 2018 will have been CE approved anyway, except my leathers predate that slightly, so I'm having a new set made. The other change is that helmets now have to be FIM homologated. So we're going to be using the same helmets that they run in MotoGP and World Superbikes, which seems like a good idea. There's just a couple of slight drawbacks. Lots of manufacturers have got helmets with the FIM homologation, but not all of them are available in the UK. And most of the ones that are available in the UK are quite expensive because they are, of course, the top of the range stuff. But luckily, I am on the Shark Race Scheme, so I will admit I haven't paid full money for this. I have still paid for it with my own money, just not the full near £800 retail price. So what's the main difference is between this and my old one? Well, actually not that much. Uh, the vents are basically the same and they work really, really well. The shell is very, very similar, although this one is full carbon and this one isn't. Uh, the visors have a little tab on them to make them easier to open but they are in fact the same visors. The big difference is it's got a much bigger fin on the back which is supposedly better for aerodynamics so it'll sort of blend in with the hump on my leathers nicely. But really the difference between this one 
and this one is that this one's been through the FIM homologation, so this one is actually legal to race in at the TT, whereas that one isn't. Now, interestingly, between the two helmets, this one's actually heavier by almost 200 grams. This one is 1,250 grams, and this one is 1,430. So this is a very light helmet, and this is still quite light, but is definitely heavier than this. Which leads me to believe that there's a little bit of weight in the fin, but mostly it's actually got a thicker shell for added safety. So I shouldn't really complain about that. So I've been racing in shark helmets now for around 10 years. In that time I have tested a couple to their full capability, and I'm still here and I'm still talking, so they obviously do their job fairly well. I've always liked them, I quite like the fact the chin bar is quite high on them. The vents are excellent. I actually prefer the smoked, sort of tinted visor to the full black, because I find the full black one a little bit too dark, but that's all personal preference. They're quite quiet. I buy them so they're actually slightly small when they're brand new. So I have to wear them for a few hundred miles to bed them in first before they're really comfortable. But the nice thing is then, when you get three or four years down the line, they still fit properly. What I don't want is to buy an expensive helmet and once it's bedded in, be like a bucket on my head. These don't bed in a massive amount, but just that little bit of give when they're new just makes them absolutely perfect when they're bedded in. So that's it, this is my new TT helmet. It will be getting some stripes of it to make it a little bit more personal, but I think it looks cool. Let me know in the comments below whether you like the big scoop on the back or not, and what you think to this helmet. Thanks for watching.